Hi everyone, welcome to the Jam College podcast. You are listening to the voices of the movies, medias and shows group where we basically discuss everything from blockbusters to Netflix shows, from films to franchises, just the art, the entertainment and the controversies behind them all. My name is Gabrielle Conquo and I will be your host for this episode. Would everyone else like to introduce themselves? Hi, I'm Esther. Hi, I'm Malak. Hi, I'm Maisha. Hi, I'm Lyba. And hi, I'm Sydney. Okay, so for today's episode, we were all given a list of genres, um, just a list of categories, and we were asked to fill in our favourite movies or series from each of these categories. And personally, I'm excited just to get a hint of what everyone's favourite show is, everyone's just unique taste. Um... And also to just get recommendations on shows and see if there are any, like, films I was probably hesitant on seeing that you guys might be able to recommend. So to get the ball rolling, the first is comedy series. That's the first category, which I think is the most appropriate. Just, I think everyone has, or, like, has to have their go-to series because, let's be real, life is hard and sometimes you need the show that you can trust to give you a laugh and you can just go back to which i think i did read a buzzfeed paper which said that is a sign of depression but let's you know let's move on my comedy series would be the office um i th- i don't think i need to explain that the office is one and this is the office us for car- clarification um i think the jokes are hilarious i love the characters um I love how, like, the jokes are just incognito, so you do have to pay attention to pick them up. And, like, the harder you, like, pay attention to them, the more jokes you get from it. The jokes aren't worn out. Like, I would say, friends, no shade, but it's, like, it's, yeah, it's just, it's original, it's something new. So, yeah, my favourite series would definitely be The Office. Um... My favorite comedy series is Fleabag. So it's it's more of a darker, well not dark, but it is kind of more dark than most comedies. And it's also kind of slice of life. So like you follow the main character and I really like it because the main character is relatable, but at the same time, she does some things that are just like unique to her. I think it's a really good series and I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it, but I really like it. I love Fleabag so much. Oh my God. But my favorite, it's probably one of my favorites, but I kind of see it more as a drama, I guess, but it is really good. My favorite would be um, the IT crowd on Netflix. Well, it's the Channel 4 thing, but it's on Netflix and it's so good. It's about three IT members, obviously, and it's just about their daily lives kind of thing but it's really really funny i don't think i've actually like found anybody else who who has seen fleabag but i would definitely recommend it to anybody who hasn't seen it i literally i i think it's so good it's, yeah i'm so glad you like picked up like fleabag is one of the best comedy series out there it's like real but like extra and extreme at the same time and it's like every second is a laugh so definitely i agree with that Personally, I haven't watched that, but um, I would say um, one of my favourite comedies would be Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which is about um, a group of detectives and it just shows like their daily life at work. And I just thought it was really funny. And there's uh, like six seasons. Actually, wait, no, I think there's seven seasons, but Netflix decided not to put the last season on for some reason. And I feel like it's really, like, binge-worthy since there's so many and, like, you would never get bored with it. Oh, my gosh, yes. Brooklyn Nine-Nine is one of the shows that are, like, top, like, up there. I just love how... I just love their personalities. They're so quirky and the jokes you can kind of understand. And even if you don't understand, it's kind of easy to interpret what they're trying to say as well. My favourite comedy has to be Mean Girls. It's very iconic and no matter how much times I rewatch it, it's just something I'll forever continue watching and never get bored of that's the same way white cheeks i it's not a series but the movie it bangs it's so good i could rewatch show i could rewatch that on and on yeah i personally love mean girls um and like when it comes to like 
um comedy series my issue with it is which i think a lot of people might may or might not be able to relate to is it always it's like the first three seasons could just be the hype and then but when it goes like down the road it just like goes down under and it just ruins the whole legacy which personally is why i like sleep bad because it only has like two episodes like two seasons but like for like the office the last two seasons all happened was just sad and it just went down under so like have you guys had those issues with like comedy series i think i i can't lie i was sad that fleabag didn't have another season because Honestly, I'd, I've grown so attached to the character. But to be honest, where it ended, it made sense for it to end there. But I don't know. I feel like sometimes they drag out the series too long. But definitely, if it's only got like two series, I feel like it could go for another one. Even with like Miranda, I wanted there to be another one because I was so attached to her character. Um, Sorry, so the next category would be a coming of age film or series um basically one with characters young um or group of characters that just follows them through like growing up and like the quirks and issues that they face as teenagers or as like young people from whatever age range okay so on netflix i would say never have i ever i think that was a really good one um especially because of the diversity in terms of like um backgrounds of the characters and like there was just a wide variety of like the characters in general and I think the plot was good as well and I think they're going for another season or series which I'm excited for but I think it was really good in covering like the life of the main character and issues that she was going through as a teenager. Yeah, I also saw that show, and they're being renewed for a second season, but I don't know when it's coming out. I thought it was pretty nice, especially seeing how the main character was a South Asian character, and you don't really see that representation much in, like, American-type shows. Yeah, never have I ever. I personally, like, did enjoy. Um, I kind of wish it came out when I was, like, younger, because, like, like, at, like, 16 it was it felt like a bit too young for me I don't know why but like when it comes to representation and when it comes to like the jokes it definitely was like a raw fire I liked Never Have I Ever but as Gabrielle said I think I would have enjoyed it more if I watched it like if it came out earlier when I was young does anyone know any others because I've been like looking for new series like follow but I don't really know any coming of age Coming of Age is probably my favourite genre of film. My favourite is probably um, Perks of Being a Wallflower. It's quite popular, but I feel like the popularity has kind of gone in the past few years, kind of. It's really good, though, and it's about this boy, and he starts at a new school, and he's really to himself, and he doesn't really have any friends, and then he slowly becomes confident, and it's really good, really good. I don't know why I didn't know that was coming of age, but I literally love that film. I don't know what I thought it was. I don't know what genre I thought it was, but it really, I really did like that one. And the other one that I just remembered was like The Edge of Seventeen. I think that one was really good. Yeah, I haven't watched that one in so long because I watched it when it first came out, but it is so good. I have so many films like that. Like, have any of you seen Super Bad? It's a comedy, but it's also, it could count as coming of age as well. I think I've seen it, but it was so long ago that I don't remember. Yeah, it's quite old. It's got um, Jonah Hill and he's really young in it. And it has Michael Sarah, who's also really young. It's quite popular. And um, it's literally about two friends. It's similar to, has anyone else seen Booksmart? No. Yeah, it's really similar to that. And it's, oh, they're both so good. They're both so funny, but they're also both coming of age things about these two friends kind of growing apart before they finish high school they're both really good yeah I personally I I saw Booksmart and I loved it um but like Perks of Being a Wallflower I only watched it like last year which is like like long after the hype but it like it irked me the film just irked me right and I think the end of the whole story kind of like it was worrying and it did like 
make me like uh, cry a bit like to the when he came to the realization no spoilers but like what happens at the end um but like the part that bugs me in the film is if you guys remember like they're in a ring and he's with like his newly found friends and like they're basically like talking or like playing a game and then like one of his friends basically says to the main character um kiss who you think is the prettiest girl in the room and at the time he's having this like he's having like um like his you know he's dating a girl he doesn't really like and he's just crushing over a girl he does and the girl he does is yeah it's played by emma watson and then he now goes and kisses emma watson which uh bugged me and i hated it and then it broke the other girl's heart which i thought she didn't like he didn't deserve her she like deserves so much more but yeah just that part in the film gets me every single time I mean, it kind of, ha- okay, well, no, it didn't have to be done, but I feel like he was being honest, which is kind of sad because, like, he was with the other girl, but, like, at the same time, yeah, it it just, I feel like it had to happen. Yeah, I mean, I really love the character, so I, yeah, I would see a problem with it, but I just love the film so much. I can't, like, I can't have that again. I don't know why I mean, like, I can't have that against it kind of thing don't know if this is coming of age but on my block on netflix i mean you do see the characters grow up of each other and their childhood and season four is coming out soon but yeah legit was gonna mention that as well and like i feel like the character development is all right but i'm not gonna lie monse and caesar or whatever his name is they really annoy me i don't know why but they do and jamal i feel like jamal's like the best character out there because He's funny, but he's also realistic in a way that, but not as realistic. You know what I mean? Yeah, Jamal Defo carries the whole show. And I think with Monse, her facial expressions make me laugh so much. But yeah, other than that, it's good. Yeah, Defo. Um, okay, so here are like um, parts, some of this. Oh yeah, some here are like a few that we didn't mention in this category that I think like you totally should. Um, like, tell me if you've watched these ones. The Get Down, which I would highly recommend. Jaden Smith is in it, so, like, check it out. It has the best playlist. I'm not even going to get into the details, but, yeah. Um, see The Get Down. And um, I think Sex Education would also come into this category, which I personally did enjoy, I guess. And I think Euphoria would also be in this category. So, yeah, yeah. Tell me what you guys thought about those ones. Um end of the world i don't know why but there were parts that actually made me cry i don't know if this is just me but like i think it was so good like the character like the journey of the two of them and then how they kept separating but then they always found each other like i thought that was really good and (laughs) sex education was so funny literally um i'd say eric was like my favorite character is that his name? Yeah. I feel like even if some people hadn't watched, like, um, Sex Education, I feel like this one quote, wash your hands, you dirty pig, I feel like from that, I feel like everyone just knew the show. Yeah, I remember that. That was a meme for a while, and people just, like, took the mic, but yeah, that was hilarious. I really loved watching Euphoria because, I don't know, not only is it because I love Zendaya and she's in it, but it's very realistic because those things can happen to many people like the whole drug situation etc yeah also um kind of like closing up this genre my favorite has to be dairy girls which i i haven't actually met another person who has watched this before but dairy dairy girls is like follows the story of like four irish girls and kind of like in the height of the whole you know the irish what, what was the name i've forgotten but you know the whole like protestant versus catholic issue in ireland and that if like if you like uh, like end of the world and on my blog i do think like, i suggest dairy girls you probably love it but yeah so our next category is superhero films or any films from the comic universe and this includes like films and series of course dc and um marvels um i think the whole entire um avengers series would definitely be like my favorite just i think the development of all the different heroes and then the addition of like newer heroes along the way i think 
they planned it out very well. And, like, I am sad that some of the characters are gone, but the way how they did it was just, like, very smart. Yeah, in my opinion, I think why Marvel would, all, like, will always best DC is because, like, they, when it comes to, like, making films, they are, like, visionaries and they actually have a plan. So it's, like, you'll watch, like, the last ones and, like, then you go back and watch, like, the first ones and, like, it just all makes sense and all ties in. And as far as, like, it has come, DC hasn't exactly matched that and that's why I think there's definitely a hierarchy in that specific genre. So, although out of all the Marvel films, my favorite would probably be the Joker that came out, I think, 2019 or last year. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, the Joker, in my opinion, yeah, definitely bested most of like, well, the in the DC category. And I don't know, I just felt for the Joker. And personally, I don't think he's, I've never thought of him as a villain. I mean, he's, he's psycho, no offense, but he is, yeah. And I just think his character, I don't know, I just have a stronger bond with him. And like the things he does, I feel more for him than I really have ever for any comic character. So yeah, my, my favorite would probably be the Joker. Yeah, I feel like they made the Joker appeal to people who don't even watch superhero films like me. I It was really good and Joaquin Phoenix was just insane in it. I thought it was so good how it was done. College podcast and tune in regularly for more. Okay, so for the next category where we'll be doing horror films. So horror films can include thrillers or just like basic um horror of like any genre, just ones that give you a fright. My favourite horror film would probably be Us, that came out last year, I think, with um, Lupita Nyong'o. Um, yeah, it came out in 2019. Definitely one of my favourite horror films. I think it was the right balance of, um, what do you call it, commentary with horror. It's not necessarily, it's thrilling, but there's, it's not too demonic, which I like. But yeah, I like the entire con- like concept. It was directed by Jordan Peele, and I'm a huge fan of um of his work. So yeah, definitely Us would be my favorite. I watched that um last week, and it was so good because I'd watched um Get Out, Jordan Jordan Peele's other film, and I really liked that. But the reviews were really mixed on Us, so I wasn't sure, which is why I hadn't watched it sooner. But I really liked it, and I really like. Um, horror films when it's not just scary for the sake of it there's like a real purpose behind it and um the do you know the director Ari Aster he's done Midsummer and um Hereditary oh yeah I yeah I saw Midsummer. that was like yeah amazing I I'm thinking about watching Hereditary soon but yeah Hereditary is literally like one of my favorite films ever it's so good and it's like it's more scary than Midsummer, so don't watch it if Midsummer scares you because like oh it's so good though and it and it takes a while because the first half I was like this is not scary and then it just goes so crazy like more crazier than Midsummer. it's so good talking about us though I really wanted to watch it but what is it actually about because I've seen like the trailer and it seems interesting but I don't really know what it's about um, Esther, do you want to take this one or should I? Uh, you can go because you know more about it, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, so us, or how do I start this? I don't know spoilers, but it will confuse you for like like half of the entire film. But like the end is completely worth it. It's about a family. So it's a black family. I believe that's significant in the plot. And I think, so weird things, I think they're on a trip weird things begin happening and the mother who's played by Lupita Nyong'o she's like she's noticing noticing these weird things and because we're not told a lot from the start we're just we're we think we're as confused as she is spoiler alert we're not um I mean we are yeah um but yeah us is about a family and fast forward another suspicious family comes into the scene and they look exactly like them so you know questions are they're from a completely different world and they are trying to kill the main black family and 
what do you call it? So it's just twists and turns. And throughout the play, throughout the film, you think you're rooting for the right people. But then by the end, uh, something goes, you realise you've been horribly mistaken and it's just completely worth it. So yeah, us is, de- well, my explanation is probably like, needs a bit of work but definitely i would recommend us it's on netflix now like it just came like last week so yeah definitely try seeing that all right i think i'll definitely have to watch it tonight or something because i'm free tonight also has anyone seen the death note because i've been thinking about um what do you call it seeing that i've like been iffy on it it seems extreme so i don't know and i don't have like an amazing stomach for horror but yeah, has anyone seen the Death Note? Not the um, anime, because I think there's an anime, but like the main film. I've never heard of it. I know the anime, but I've never heard of the movie. Yeah, just as well. I think the anime is supposed to be like much better. But yeah, I'm, I might look into that. Um, I don't know if anyone's watched it, but like the Conjuring, si- the con- what is it called? Uh, the Conjuring series. That was really good. It's, I feel like. The build-up of each movie was, like, linked to each other, so it wasn't, like, a crazy, plot-twisted, confusing kind of movie. I felt like it all came together really well, and, yeah, there was some kind of, like, jump scares and stuff, but I felt like it wasn't, like, over-the-top jump scares like some horror movies do, which, like, ruins the whole movie, but... Yeah, The Conjuring probably has to be my favourite horror movie. Like, as you said, it's not really scary, but I liked how, like, all three of the movies, like, connect with each other, and, yeah like in total what would you guys say your favorite like sub segment like sub genre genre of um horror would be because i know there's um what do you call it there's like thrilling there's like gory horror so the ones with like 18 rated um like r-rated violence there's like horror comedy and there's like cult horror and like demonic horrors what would you guys say like is which one is like a no-no for me it would be like demonic horrors because i think they linger and i can't i don't know there's just something uh, like ultra spiritual about them and even it's just after watching the film i always feel like no this one's going to come to life and i can't deal with that so most times it's a no-no but would you guys say there's a sub segment like supernatural horror that you just don't deal with honestly i mean demonic horror is all right it's just I feel like gory horror is a bit too much. Like, I don't know. I just don't find it interesting. It gets really boring because all they do is you just kill. And that's basically it. And by the end of the movie, everyone literally dies. And there's only that one protagonist that always survives. And it's kind of predictable as well. Honestly, yeah. The whole trope about, like, one survivor facts, yeah. This might be, like, super basic. And it's, like, um, mild horror. But, like, it. So the what do you call it the more recent ones with the um yeah the it's um what do you call it franchise i personally like like it I, I think i prefer the new ones to the old ones which is like weird to say i haven't read any of the books but for it i like the characters i think like they're like you know they're modern but like in i don't know yeah they're just amazing to relate to i do like them um but yeah what did you guys think about the um it film that came out i think 2019 i've li- not gonna lie but i've literally forgotten all the movies that came out like horror wise but i remember seeing it in cinemas and i i think i prefer the first one i don't know i feel like generally when it comes to movies like their first release they're always kind of better than like the second releases because i feel like i feel like the ending was like like it wasn't as expected true i think for like the first it i the the reason why i enjoyed like the second one was what they did with the like the whole adult thing they gave um the girl of the group an amazing backstory like of her oldest like elder self and i kind of enjoyed that yeah it was like you know what i mean like nostalgia just seeing them you know if how they would be if they grew up that was kind of cool so the next category is rom-com. Um, this is, yeah, self-explanatory. Anything romance, anything comedy. Yeah. So what do you, um, what are your favourite rom-coms? My, like, all-time favourite would be um, Love Actually. But I feel like because it's a Christmas film, no one really sees it as a rom-com because you can only watch it at Christmas, but I am guilty of watching it 
outside of December. But it's so good and it follows all these different couples at Christmas time and their love stories. And it's just really good. And it's quite old and, and it has loads of A-list celebrities in it. Um, and the other one I really like is uh, Notting Hill. Talking about rom-coms, though, um, I don't know if anyone's going to attack me or anything, but you know, to all the boys I loved, that series was, oh gosh, let's just say after the first movie, it was the most cringiest thing I have ever seen. It was just, it was just a no. Did you end up watching the one that came out, like, recently? I couldn't do that yeah, to I did. I did, and it was just so cringy. I regret watching it. But the first one was really, I think it was good, but then it just went downhill from there. Yeah, that's true. And Noah, whatever his second name is, cannot pronounce it. I think he just got, like, uglier, if that makes sense. Like, he had, like, a glow down from the first movie. Yeah, honestly, past the first one, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to, like, dedicate time of day to this series. But yeah, I don't know why they keep going on. I genuinely like thought and hoped it would end at the second one, but it clearly didn't. But yeah, I do think it's like slightly cringy. I think for me personally, my favorite um, what do you call it rom com of all time would probably be The Proposal with Sandra Bullock. Like I think I said this before, it's amazing. I love her. I love her character. Like, literally, I could watch her in anything. But yeah, The Proposal is funny. It's like she's the boss, the boss in this um, workplace, and Everyone dislikes her. She's like, you know, unpleasant to be around, but she needs, she's going to get deported. So she needs a visa. So she then, you know, decides, yeah, I'm, I need to get married to my assistant who's played by Ryan Reynolds. And it's just an, like an exciting journey. Like they go through and they go somewhere. They have to prove that they're in love and that they're not just trying to scam the government. Um, but yeah, that, that, that would probably be my favorite, um, romantic comedy, definitely. Another romantic comedy I really like is actually Crazy Rich Asians. I don't know, but I just find the fact that people are that rich, it's just so fascinating to me. And um, from, like, being stereotypical, but I feel like rich people are actually, like, the way they joke around is so different to the way we joke around, and it's really interesting to actually watch it. Honestly, I'm so glad you mentioned it. I didn't, I forgot it would even be in this category, but, yeah, I loved Crazy Rich Asians. I love the, like, like the, um, what do you call it? the filming, everything about it. It's amazing. It was funny. Um, Aquafina was in it. Um, a few other, like, what do you call it, actors that, like, my parents and everyone, like, I'm, like I watched the film with, just loved. But, yeah, Crazy Rich Asians would definitely be on top of that list. There's one I'm trying to remember. Um, you guys remember the person who played in Pitch Perfect as Fat Amy? There's a show she has. Um, there's a, a film. It's called, like, It's Not Romance. It's... Like it's and it's funny and it's one of the Hemsworth, one of the Hem- Hemsworth brothers are in it, and yeah, I think I had a few laughs in in that one. I can't quite remember which one it was, but yeah, that seems to be funny. Do you guys remember the name by any chance? Is it isn't it romantic? Yeah, yes, that's the one. Thank you. Has um yeah, has anyone also seen Thirteen Going on Thirty? Yes, I love that film. Yeah, with um Jennifer Garner, love that. Um and Mark Ruffalo, he's in it. That was a fun film. Um, like coming to like wrapping up this genre. Um, coming to America. Um, like we kind of spoke about that in our first draft, but um the second one is out. Like I think it just came out a few like this week, last week maybe. But yeah, I'm excited. Apparently, it's um a romantic comedy, which is like. Yeah, but it's I'm going to watch the um Coming to America like this week just because that nostalgia apparently on Vogue and um Salt and Pepper and someone else like they just showed up and they like had like sang and like performed and yeah so um Coming to America I definitely will probably be watching that just for the nostalgia. All right, the next series is um an animated. Right, animated series. So, preferably adult to young adult animated series. The only um animated series I watched is Big Mouth, or like young ad- young adult animated series is Big Mouth, and I I liked it. I don't know. I just don't feel like I'm yet to watch the animation and really like it. 
But um, I've heard Rick and Morty is supposed to be really good. Oh my gosh, Big Mouth is... Re- Sometimes, though, Big Mouth can get really explicit with the things they, like, do and say. But I feel like it's kind of good because some people are really uncomfortable to say it. And I guess, like, the, like, awareness of, like, humans and how they go through puberty and our teenage years, I guess. Yeah, so I, I love Rick and Morty. Um, Big Mouth, I... Y- it kind of made me uncomfortable, but, like, a whole bunch of people I know, like, love it, and I get why. Um, you said something about, what do you call it, like, the hormone monster, and, like, the, these, like, caricatures and, like, personified versions of, like, basic um, childhood adolescent experiences, and how that was, like, a big part in the film, and, it was, like, made it worth it. Okay, so, like, the next on the list is drama series. Which I, I think this like category has so much potential because almost like all films and series come under this one. So um my favourite drama series would be Orange is the New Black. Um, just because well I love the characters and I love the conversations they force you to have. The series was a masterpiece. I think it like not a lot of series makes me like make me cry, but yeah, Orange is the New Black succeeded in doing that watch Orange is the New Black but I've, I'm tempted to watch it but right now I'm watching like Grey's Anatomy I know I'm very late but it's so good so good and then I feel like something bad's gonna happen because it's Grey's Anatomy and honestly Meredith I'm not gonna lie but Meredith kind of annoys me or is it just me no it's not I I, lit- I watched um what do you call it um Grey's Anatomy like um during the the lockdown and yeah of all the characters like all of them seem so much more interesting than Meredith but um also like towards the end I haven't like watched much of it but she's like the one with her head tightly screwed on I think she just keeps the group together well like the show together so yeah I yeah I get that but I Grey's Anatomy is also a really good choice my um favorite would be Shameless. I've never seen Grey's Anatomy, but I I was tempted, but I was like, it is a lot to like invest in because I feel like when you watch a TV show like that, you really have to invest in it. So I was just like, that's a lot of hours that I would be spending watching it. So I didn't. But Shameless is so good. It's they did a UK version and that didn't. I think it did well, but. The US version is still going, and that's the one I watched. It's on Netflix, the US version. Actually, I think both versions are. Um, but yeah, the, and it's about a family, and I think there's, I think there's six of them, six siblings, and they don't really have a parental, they don't, none, neither of their parents, um, look after them really, and it's the older sister who has to look after them. And it sounds quite boring, but it really, um, it gets so good and because it's been going on so long. I think it's like seven or eight seasons. Um, the characters have really developed and there's, they've developed so much and there's so much to them now. And it's not as good because I feel like so many shows, they go so bad after like their third season and it's still really good. It's not on the same level, I would say now. But I'd say it's still, like, really, really good. My favourite series probably has to be The Vampire Diaries. I think it's because it's really unique. Like, I've never watched something to do with vampires before. And, like, it just captivates you, like, from season one, even though it's really long. I think there's, like, about eight seasons. But from episode one, you just get interested. You connect with the characters. They are kind of funny. And, yeah. Damon, 100%. <laughs> Join the guy. Also, like, reminiscing on Vampire, Di- Vampire Diaries, do you guys remember Teen Wolf? I think, like, a whole, like, little, pe- like, what do you call it, kids still talk about it, but Teen Wolf was a moment, I would say. It was, like, mm, it was, like, a phase, but, like, we enjoyed it, and Styles will, yeah, will always be Team Styles, but, yeah, do you guys remember Teen Wolf? I've heard of it, but I actually have never watched it. Yeah, same here. I feel like I kind of watched like the first episode, and then I got bored. I got really into it at like twelve or thirteen. I was so into it, and then I and then it just went so quickly. It the plot just got a bit off track, and I think it does get better after that. But I was just so confused. 
and yeah but I did I was so into it and I feel like that is just the best age to watch it like 13 to 15 yeah that yeah I can't believe you guys haven't seen that I probably was just like a, like um a small group of people who were into it but yeah it was like super popular but yeah you'd have to you had to be a kid to watch it like now for instance I can't I I didn't watch Vampire Diaries back in the day, so I tried watching it just to get the references. And same with Harry Potter, I just couldn't sit through it. But yeah, that you definitely have to watch it when you're younger. Um, has anyone seen which one to start with? Ginny and Georgia that came out on Netflix like the past month. It has gotten mixed reviews on Netflix, but yeah, go. Yes, Ginny and Georgia. I actually kind of like it, but the thing is, the ending kind of was like what like honestly the ending was so random i was like yeah i <laughs> she literally left the town with her younger brother <laughs> might be a spoiler okay but yeah jenny and georgia i like the premise everyone dislikes the scene where there's the um what's it called oppression olympics that was a bit problematic but all in all i kind of like the concept it was like one of those feel-good series definitely i like the mom she's an amazing character as well Whereas I felt like her backstory really added to, like, the show as well, and it kind of just built up her character. Definitely. I also like the fact that she's Southern. It's just, it just matches her vibe, definitely. Did anyone see The Queen's Gambit on Netflix as well? Which came out, like, earlier this year, I think. Yeah, I really liked it. Um, and didn't she get, like, the actress in it? She's um An- Anya Taylor-Joy, I think. And she got... And she was an Emma this year as well. And she was nominated for Best Actor. So she got two nominations for Best Actor in Queen's Gambit and then Best Actor in Emma as well. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Queen's Gambit, honestly, I think um, deserves the world. It was amazing. It was like an amazing experience. I wish I would pay so much to rewatch it for the first time again. But definitely, I love that. She's an amazing actress. Like, she's uh, amazing at what she does. But yeah, have you guys seen it? nope i find that so weird but yeah it's yeah definitely try out the queen's gambit um if you haven't already it it was amazing um but yeah uh glee glee's another one um in this series does anyone have any vocal opinions on glee uh i did get really into it and um it gets so bad. It's so good, and it, it's an acquired taste. I feel like, but it it gets it's. I'm not really selling it, but it is good. Like I'd say, first three seasons are good, and then after that, it went really downhill. But yeah, and it's like they it's basically a musical, but a TV show, and they sing. They don't make up their own. Well, they do make up their own songs at some points, but most of it is just um like pop songs or musical numbers that they do yeah who would you say your favorite character is i really liked mercedes but they and she was like the best singer by far and they didn't i feel like they didn't give her much character development and she just disappeared so quickly once she graduated just like rounding right like rounding up the series um there is the the crown wink saga and grace um snowpiercer so just like let's clear that out has anyone seen wink saga that also came out on um netflix a few weeks ago um i've never like saw the whole episode like i only watched a bit of the first episode but i felt like the real version of it it kind of ruined the like cartoon version of it or, or is it just me Because there's, like, lots of mixed reviews about it as well. Yeah, from the clips I saw, it just, it wasn't it. Um, Because if you look at, like, the outfits for starters, the Wings series was completely different. Like, it was bright and bubbly, even though I get that they're trying to adapt it to, obviously, the people who watched Wings back in the day have grown up, and they're teenagers slash, like, like what do you call it in their 20s now so they want something a bit more mature but the series definitely went on the trying to be Riverdale kind of side and I I wasn't feeling it definitely didn't get into um it w- it would be fine if they just left the you know the franchise as it as it was just the animation but 
they did that. So, you know, you can't take that back. But it was, yeah, I, I definitely don't recommend watching that. Absolutely. I, I completely agree. And like in like the following seasons where, where everything went downhill, they I think they attempted to tick so many boxes that they just, you know, tried to give Mercedes any love interest. And um, it just all went, it, it was just messy. But yeah, I, there was a phase where I was completely into it. I liked how they tackled these issues in the first season. I think it was moderated, like child pregnancy, um, adult, mm, teenage pregnancy. Um, What do you call it? Just like bullying, um, what do you call it? Coming out, like they handled handled it like amazing, like well. But like, yeah, everything does definitely go a bit downhill from there. But like, there's still something you can enjoy in the latest series, I think. Um, although my fa- okay, I don't know about my favorite character. Um, I pretty much I think Sue. I was talking to this about someone else. Sue Sue is problematic, obviously, but. In a way, all of the characters were, and Sue for me is just, I like, like her guts. I like that she's open, and I like that she does, there are some, we get like some glimpses into her humanity, like she's not completely insane, like she does have a heart, which is nice. My worst character would definitely be Rachel, like no questions asked. She is obnoxious, and I'm not going to go into a rant about it, but yeah, um, my favorite would be Sue, and my worst would be Rachel. When I'm talking about Snowpiercer, are you talking about the uh, TV shows, TV show or the film? I, yeah, I meant the TV show. If you've seen the film, I considered watching it as well, but yeah, either one. Um, I watched the TV show. I wasn't that into it, but apparently the, uh, the film is supposed to be like really, really good. And it was directed by the same guy who directed Parasite. Which I and it has um Chris Evans as the lead and I and that's got really really good reviews because Snowpiercer I wasn't as sure on the TV show but apparently the film's supposed to be really good and I've been meaning to watch it. Yeah. Also, speaking about Parasite, which I think oh um it kind of fits into this category. Parasite was amazing. Like everything about it, the context, like the meaning of the um of the film, like you know, the wider context, the wider meaning. Um, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. I like its commentary on um class and classism and kind of middle class areas, I guess. But yeah, how did you guys feel about Parasite? Have any of you guys seen it? Oh, I wa- I watched it in cinemas. Honestly, it's fascinating to see how some people like have a mindset like that and people actually do do that like I've realized but like the ending was so like it was out of nowhere like someone killed someone and I'm not gonna do any spoilers but it really does mess with your head and at the end of it you're just like what what the hell just happened in this movie yeah I really liked the film and that Oscar was so deserved and yeah I really liked it yeah definitely um have you guys seen um what do you call it? Atypical. I think we spoke about this in the last draft. But yeah, Atypical is um probably it, it's like it's an it's an enjoyable um series. It's like it's a feel good, so it's like there's no horror, it's not like frightening or anything. You can definitely be relaxed to it. It's um it's about a character, he has autism and it's he's an amazing character I love him I love his personality he goes through so much and you know, he's trying to grow up and the series like follows him his sister and his entire family and I like that I like the inclusion it's definitely something you could watch with like your relatives it's like that kind of feel-good film but yeah also has anyone seen the Umbrella Academy I watched um the first few episodes I I wasn't sure on it. I should. I've been meaning to watch it again, but yeah, I really like the all the characters. There's a huge range. Like I feel like there's someone everyone can relate to. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm not entirely into the kind of action genre. But if you're into that, like it's not action. It's um kind of superhero hero dystopian kind of thing. But yeah, I'm just not sure. All right, Malak, you said you watched You. How did you find it? 
I really loved you. However, I kind of did find it weird because it kind of it makes you sympathize for like Joe Goldberg and he's literally the murderer and like the psychopath, which I did find weird. But I think it was really good. It was unique and especially like the whole idea of him like putting the people he murdered in like a box. I think that was it was strange, but it was something that I've never seen before. Definitely. And um, wait, there's uh, this might be like far fetched, but has anyone seen "I Will Destroy You" um, from the lady who she produced "I Will Destroy You"? She acted in um, uh, Chewing Gum, I think. Has anyone seen that yet? I've been meaning to watch it, but I watched her other show, Chewing Gum, and I really liked that. Yeah, same. I I haven't like found a way to um like I I don't have access to I think BBC iPlayer, so I'm not able to watch um I will destroy you. But apparently it had like really good reviews, and I stand the producer, and she's been through so much, and that was reflected in the quality of of the series. Apparently, um so yeah, I definitely would like to watch. It. I think it, it trigger warnings. It tackles ser- like serious topics on um what do you call it like yeah serious topics just brace yourself but yeah definitely i want to get to watching that right so we're out of time and um just like round off the episode um can i ask everyone for like their two favorite series so if we go home with anything um is there two that you would highly recommend um anyone to go so this is like two favorite films and two favorite series oh it definitely agrees with that to me um Ginny and georgia uh for movies uh parasite uh not really a movie person so don't know another one mine would probably be my favorite films would be um hereditary and ladybird and then my favorite shows would be shameless and the it crowd my favorite series probably have to be the vampire diaries and how to get away murder and with movies probably the whole conjuring movies like every one of them um okay so i don't think i really touched on this but the two i would say is the get down which is like so underrated um it's a bit like it's netflix original but it's an amazing show Jaden smith is in it um but yeah i i love that so definitely if you haven't seen it go watch the get down um second would be dairy girls um which just follows a group of like four girls and a guy who's british um through like the irish troubles and yeah it's one of the funniest shows i told people to watch it and like the first response was like no it's not like their thing but like after watching it they did say that they enjoyed it so i would say dairy girls so they get down dairy girls that would be my two favorite but yeah i think that's it um thank thank you everyone for like joining in this has been a fun episode to make Thank you, everyone, for listening. Have an amazing week. Uh, get out more, have some fresh air. Don't always stay inside and be watching movies. Yeah, make sure you're going on walks and have a good week. Um, and also really excited for um, to be able to come back into school. Um, make sure you make light of that and um, appreciate the small victories, I guess. Um, so that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you everyone so much for listening and thank you so much to our speakers who were able to make it for this video and for this podcast um see you in our next episode hi everyone thank you for listening to the jam college podcast this has been the media movies and shows group